Here's everything you need to know about MODOK. This is Nerdist Now. The final trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp colon Quantumania hit the internet this week, and it gave us more of a look at Kang, Chronopolis, and the Quantum Realm. But there's a little something floating there in the background of some shots. Blink and you might miss a big ass floating head with tiny limbs hovering behind Kang. You won't miss that, it's nightmare fuel. If you're not a comics person and you're very confused by a Corey Stoll that's 95% noggin, that's what we're here for. We're gonna be talking about the malevolent MODOK and his comic history. But if you wanna read more about this floating mad scientist, Eric Diaz has you covered over on Nerdist.com. And of course, to talk about MODOK, we're gonna be digging into the comics as well as MCU movies like Ant-Man. So here's your chance to leave if you want to know nothing about the worst boss AIM has ever had. Now that's what I call leadership. Still here? Fantastic. Four? Uh-uh, not yet. With most super weird Marvel characters, you can usually track their origin back to Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. MODOK first appeared in 1967's Tales of Suspense, number 93. Despite being a punching bag in the Marvel Comics universe, he has a surprising amount of reach across multiple mediums. Not just comics, but he also has his own animated series, multiple video game appearances, and a tiki mug, which we don't have, those are expensive. But how did that dome get so destructive? In his origin story, MODOK started out as mild-mannered George Tarleton, a put-upon scientist working for the criminal organization Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM. You could think of them as a low-rent Hydra with way worse-looking uniforms. Brilliant move to go with punch-me-in-the-face yellow. That's the official crayon color. George's father, Alvin, the best father name, created AIM in the hopes of becoming a high-tech arms dealer, like you do. Not satisfied with simply creating laser death machines, AIM scientists eventually used George as a guinea pig in their advanced mutagenic science experiments. A choice those scientists came to regret. And not just because George was super weird to hang out with now. His brain grew so large that his human body couldn't support its own weight any longer. So MODOK relies on his mechanical exoskeleton slash hover chair named the Doomsday Chair. Doomsday Chair is a way cooler name than the Hover Round. The Doomsday Chair is equipped with several deadly projectile weapons and offers surprising lumbar support. He might look silly, but he could destroy you with a single thought once he's done making speeches about it. He's a real gab machine. By upgrading George's brain to inhuman levels, he became capable of enhanced intuition, pattern solving, information storage slash retrieval, and logical slash philosophical structuring. In short, he was smarter than everyone else on the planet. He was given the acronym MODOK with a C, which stood for Mental Organism Designed Only for Computing. I wonder if that'll last. Thanks to his super brain, MODOK could predict probable outcomes of specific tactical scenarios, a perfect tool for world conquering and betting on football. And wouldn't you know it, after George transformed into a cyberpunk bobblehead, AIM scientists couldn't control him, and he slaughtered his creators and took control of AIM for himself. He renamed himself MODOK, replacing the C with a K, which stands for, get this everyone, mental organism designed only for killing. The supervillain equivalent of going by your middle name when you go to a new high school. MODOK's AIM-created headband allows him to focus his mental power into destructive energy beams, and he has psychic abilities, including telepathy and the power to control the minds of others. He can even generate force fields similar to Susan Richards, the Invisible Woman. We must say, MODOK doesn't live up to his name often in Marvel's world. For being designed, quote, only for killing, he does a lot of speechifying, and actually not that much killing. MODOK's first big conflict was with Captain America, who sought to rescue his girlfriend Sharon Carter from AIM's clutches. After losing to Captain America, obviously, a long animosity between MODOK and the superhero community began. MODOK, 80% brain and 100% rotten. <laughs> Over the next several decades, MODOK fought Iron Man, the Fantastic Four, Namor, the Ms. Marvel version of Carol Danvers, the X-Men, and more. There's almost no Marvel hero who hasn't crossed paths with MODOK. He even fought other villains, like Doctor Doom. In the end, and they all humiliated him and sent him and his collection of big hats packing. That's not canonical, I just think he probably had a phase as a fedora guy. We were all into ska at some point. Eventually, MODOK was reverted to his human form of George Tarleton, but an even more dangerous clone of his called MODOK Superior continued to make trouble for Marvel's heroes. Like a villainous Gallagher II reigning minor terror over the Marvel comic universe, like bits of smashed watermelon. But what about the MODOK we see floating along in the Quantumania trailer? With the now-confirmed casting of Corey Stoll in the role of MODOK, this is clearly not the comic version of MODOK that we've been talking about. That's right, it's everyone's favorite MCU villain, Darren Cross, also known as Yellow Jacket. But seriously, this is a pro Corey Stoll show. Keep up the great work, pal. 
We last saw Yellow Jacket getting sucked into the Quantum Realm at the end of the first Ant-Man movie after his suit was compromised. Interestingly, MODOK was supposed to debut in the MCU years earlier. He almost premiered in Captain America the Winter Soldier, originally portrayed by Peter Dinklage, but that did not come to fruition. We also know that AIM has existed in the MCU as well when they appeared in Iron Man 3. But with that version of AIM long gone, we're dealing with a whole different kind of MODOK. One that we're going to name MODOK Cory. Update the wikis. We've only gotten two glimpses at old Humongo Head, one of them in battle mode, so we're not entirely sure what his motives are in the Quantum Realm. But we do have a theory that involves a time chair that you can find in our Quantumania trailer breakdown right here. We also wouldn't be surprised if the MCU MODOK was a servant of Kang. You land in a strange new realm with a parade float for a head and Jonathan Majors offers you a job? You're taking that gig. Could MODOK stand for mental organism designed only for Kang? We'll find out when Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania hits theaters February 17th. But tell us, what do you think? How do you think Darren Cross survived being trapped in the Quantum Realm? Did you know that there's multiple Elvis MODOKs? They're like Elvises with big heads. You knew exactly what I was talking about. There's like three of them. And what kind of hat do you think would look good on MODOK's head? I think he could rock a beret. Ooh, or a Hamburg. Let's put a picture of a Hamburg so people know what we're talking about. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.